Moving on. Britain, Reform Act of 1867, gives urban workers the right to vote. Okay, so it expands suffrage to urban workers. Um, the Victorian age is in the late 19th century, um, and so this is the era in which Queen Victoria will be in charge. So this is an era in Britain that will coincide with the creation of the empire, um, and that is, of course, the empire in which the sun never sets on the British Empire, including the jewel of the empire, India. Um, the Victorian age will also be this period of economic prosperity in Britain. Um, <coughs> the second industrial revolution resulting in all sorts of new advancements and therefore better standards of living for people. And so it's sort of this, this age of, of optimism, we could say, in, in Britain, this age of progress. And um, the Victorian era culturally, the Victorian age, is uh, culturally often is someone is Victorian or has Victorian values, and we hear that term today, it will refer to their, it's, it means they're a little conservative. Victorians, for example, wanted to outlaw prostitution. They thought it was not civilized, right? Victorians, for example, um, you know, other things like this. I, I, um, I can't think of uh, other than right off the top of my head, but basically, often you'll, you'll hear someone, you might encounter this, where someone will be called Victorian, uh, because it's sort of this old-fashioned sense of propriety, of how, how to be proper. And... Um, yeah, and Victorian like architecture or Victorian literature. Like I know last year, when you were in Miss Brooks' class, she was the li that would be yeah. that would be the architecture and the literature of the period. Okay. So it refers just like Elizabethan refers to that, and so basically Queen Victoria doesn't have power. Powers in Parliament, but she is in charge for a long period. I think fifty years or something like that. She's queen, and so. This just refers to this era, this era in which Britain is growing economically, seeing cultural improvements, having overseas colonization, and so therefore this is a great time in British history. And that's why the Victorian era is, is you know, discussed. Okay, now during this time the two dominant politicians are going to be Disraeli, who's the leader of the Conservatives, and Gladstone, who's the leader of the Liberals. Gladstone and his liberal parliament, uh, when it's in charge, will be putting in place things like the Education Act that will put the state in charge of education, not churches. He'll be putting in place laws that, for example, um, create um, uh, civil service exams or exams for government jobs and uh, army positions so that these are not going to be based on one's noble status or lineage, um, but instead based on one's merit. Um, Disraeli uh, is the leader of the conservatives, um, and so he will be a great champion of overseas colonization. And Disraeli will also appeal to um, the workers. Uh, with attempts to, uh, to have the government helping out the working class. Um, and, and so an example of this under his leadership is uh, the Public Health Act that's passed. And there's several that are passed, which is really under his leadership another one is passed, with the goal uh, ostensibly to help uh, those people living in, in poor urban conditions. Um, David Lloyd George, uh, is also mentioned. He is the a liberal who begins to pioneer the welfare state in the early 20th century in Britain. Basically, he will increase taxes on the rich and on the inheritance of the rich. And he will, um, with that money, create programs that will help the poor. Uh, he wants to alleviate or, or end curb poverty. Now, David Lloyd George is a liberal doing this. 
which will be a key then change in what the Liberal Party will do. And why is the Liberal Party changing from a party merely about rights, protecting rights, and advancing the interests of the bourgeoisie, which is what historically the Liberals were doing, to a party that's about <coughs> promoting the interests of labor and the working class, partly. And a huge reason why is because now workers can vote. And so the liberals have to appeal to the workers, just like the conservatives appeal to the workers for support. And so um, the, um, David Lloyd George um, will mark an important transition in liberalism, where liberals, who historically were about the primacy of individual rights, and including that laissez-faire economics, he will say that, no, the government should be doing more uh, to help out the poor. So this is an example of utilitarianism in practice. Now what's going to happen is David Lloyd George is actually the last liberal, I believe, uh, I could be wrong, but he's the last prominent liberal who will be prime minister. Because what happens is that the Labor Party, this new political organization that gets support from unions and is more socialist, the Labor Party will begin to siphon off support for the liberals. And so right after World War I, we're gonna ha during the 1920s, we had the first labor prime minister, uh, McDonald, Ramsey McDonald. And so what we'll see is that the liberal party's influence in politics will wane. It will become the third party of Britain. And this remains to this day. The conservatives and labor will be the two dominant parties. Okay, now one of the big questions in the late 19th century is the question about Ireland. Irish question, what should happen to Ireland? Now, it's very complicated because the English colonized Ireland and many English have ownership of the land in Ireland and many of the Irish were robbed of their land, forced off or forced to be peasants. And so it's connected to land ownership it's also connected to Cultural identity, right? Is Ireland part of Great Britain or not? And um, many liberals resist granting Ireland independence. Um, and, and so do conservatives, right? There's more conservatives that want the powerful British to control the world or to have these large colonies. You know, they, they of course want to keep Ireland as part of their state. Now, the Irish are advocating for home rule. Irish can elect people into parliaments, just like people in Scotland or Wales or England are all electing people to parliaments. So the Irish elect people to parliament. But many Irish are campaigning for home rule. For example, Charles Parnell is the leader of this Irish home rule movement. He's a member of parliament in London, but he's campaigning for a separate parliament to be created in Dublin in Ireland. Um, now, this issue actually divides the liberals. Gladstone um, favors Irish home rule, but many liberals won't. And the reason why they won't is because they want to protect the um, property of the British, of the English people that have settled in Ireland. And they're afraid that if Ireland has home rule, there will be policies to redistribute property to the Irish, who, when before they were colonized, used to control the land. Um, so it divides the liberals over this question. And it's part of the reason contributing to the end of the Liberal Party as, as one of those two parties.